I change your bum life. You fight me, it's a celebration. When you sign to fight trackery. me, it's a celebration. You ring back home, you ring your wife. Baby, we done it. We're rich, baby. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. Are you ready? That goes in the fire. Are you ready? Let's get it all. Yo, 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 welcome back to the fifth round. As always, your boy, Steven Musteris. And of course, I got a little Gracie over the shoulder sleeping already, but. You know, I'm just going to get into it. Got a couple topics today, but, you know, I think for the most part, for the average person, you know, this week, everything's highlighted around Sunday, the big Super Bowl. Who's going to win? Patty Mahomes. Is he going to try to threaten, you know, Tom Brady's GOAT status or, you know, are the Eagles going to pull it up? You know, everybody's talking about it, but I mean, if you're watching this video, I guess I could probably sit here and speak for you. I don't want to, but I'm just saying like, you guys can keep that fucking Super Bowl. Saturday, we have one of the biggest fights that we've had in forever. And, you know, it's all relative, I guess, because literally within a month, we're going to have, you know, the return of John Jones. You got, you got Jorge Masvidal coming back, the Gaethje Fazi fight. You got Izzy uh, Prayer 3, Usman Edwards 3. You got all these fights coming up. So it's not necessarily like we're sitting here saying this weekend coming up is our Super Bowl weekend. That's for sure. But it's, I mean, when is it that we get a chance to see the top two pound for pound fighters ever fight? Like, I'm pretty sure since the pound for pound rankings, this is probably the first one. I can't remember. I know John Jones has always been on top, but I can't remember. I should have looked this up before. I didn't think I'd be talking about it, but I just can't remember if DC ever got uh, ranked two or whatever. I know like, during his whole John Jones thing, I know John Jones was getting in trouble, and DC, it's the only reason he was ever the champ at 205. No offense, but you know he's beating Rumble and Gus and all these things. So I, I can't remember if he ever got up there in the whole Stipe thing too. I just don't think DC was up there. But anyway, still, it's like it's not every day we get the pound for pound greatest uh, you know fighter against the number two. And as well, when do we? You know, it's not every damn day that we get the 145 champion going up to fight for the 155 belt. So you know, there's so many different ways I can go about this. And I mean, clearly, of course, I'm talking about Alexander Volkanovsky and Islam Makachev, but. This is where it's weird being a fan right here. Like, I know Saturday, this past Saturday, we all just, like, for the Derek Lewis and uh, Spivak fight, and then, of course, like, the whole Bellator fight card that was, you know, before. Like, we had a really wild night Saturday for MMA fans, especially if you watch both cards. And not to mention, if you watch boxing as well, there's some crazy boxing fights with uh, Amanda Serrano, I think, had, like, one of the fight of the year and everything. So, you know, a crazy night Saturday. But, dude, it's like... I just, I, I don't know how we're sitting here with one of the biggest fights of the year, biggest fights of the last couple years, and we're sitting here and we're hearing more about the slap league and we're hearing more, I mean, clearly we're going to hear more about the Super Bowl. It's the NFL. It's way bigger than the UFC, but it's like, I'm almost hearing more, you know, in all respects to Fedor and everything, you know, Emilian Anko's last fight was Saturday for Bellator. I was hearing more for that than anything, you know, it's like... You know, you're hearing Francis Ngannou's whole situation. I mean, the Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler, the ultimate fighter thing's getting blown up. And it's like, yeah, here we are, fight week. And the UFC is not hyping this fight up at all. I know I know, a lot of diehards are out there tweeting, posting videos, you know, all the forums that us MMA fighter or fans are on. You know, it's like we're seeing it out there and we're hyping it up. But, I mean, Jesus, we just saw the other night on uh, Saturday night and the pre uh, post-fight press conference with Dana. He's forgetting Islam Makachev's name and... I don't get me wrong, you know, it's it's very I do it all the time. You know how hard it is to sit there and ramble and he get all these questions asked you and things and you gotta come up with like this straight answer every time. Like, yeah, you're gonna trip over your words, you're gonna forget things, you got all these things going off the top of your head. Like, yeah, it's not easy to remember names, but I just think it's really funny, though, that he's sitting up there at the press conference and he's hyping up all the slap league and type, bringing up every stat in the world about how many viewers they keep compared to, you know, who like who's, who's watching the, I think it's AEW before them. It's like who stays and watches. They're saying, oh, we'll keep like 50% of the the viewership there. And then we're keeping, we got, we're the number two viewed thing and at night. And, you know, it's just weird how he's bringing up all these stats that make you, you know, that make that memory really start pop, pounding out. And you got to sit there and come up with all these stats and then you tell me you can't remember the Islam Makachev's name like really it's that hard so I mean that doesn't help and clearly I'm not going to sit up here and bash Dana for it I just think it's weird how you can remember all those stats about you know CBS or whatever the hell the slap league's on and then and then of course the champion that's fighting this week and you completely forget about it and I don't know if it's the fight necessarily is not getting hyped up because I think a lot of people think Islam's going to win which I mean it could be the thing but Dude, I mean, this is one of the biggest fights that we've had. Like, I've been a diehard fan. I mean, 
to be fair, I can't consider myself a diehard fan when I first start. Like, yeah, you fall in love with it, and you start watching every fight card and all these things, and you start to get to know the guys' names. But, like, maybe deep down you think you're a diehard. But, you know, necessarily, I think it takes a couple years, like five years or, you know, six, seven years to become a diehard fan of a certain sport. And especially, I mean, it could be quicker if you attain, you know, the like, you know, you start knowing all these fighters' names. You start really looking up all the fighters. You start figuring out all this shit. But it takes years and years to remember these guys' names and who they are and to really know the ins and outs of fighting. And I still don't even know it all. But I'm knowing way more now than I ever have. So if I consider myself a diehard fan back then, I mean... I have to be one now, at least the way I would say it. So for us, for us diehards, like, yeah, we're hyped out here. And, you know, when's the, like, I mean, there's been some big major fights that we've had over the years. I mean, you can go on for days, but like, there's also, this is what's nice about new day, new era UFC is like back then the fight that we all wanted to see was the, you know, the Anderson, Anderson Silva GSP fight. Never got it. The Brock Lesnar Fedor fight. Never got it. We, we wanted some of these big, big fights that just never seemed to happen. I know there was some, even some rumblings there of like John Jones and Anderson Silva, like all these, all these wild things that people wanted. And we just never got it because the UFC was like, no, we don't do that. You know, we got to make sure that they fight in their divisions. And then of course, throughout the years, new owners, you know, social media taking over it's all about numbers 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 and of course it's like the it seems like that's the model now it's like how quick can we make a super fight and compared to back then when there was no such thing as a super fight so you know i am quick to it's kind of like uh as funny as it is to bring back up the nfl it seems like everybody nowadays if you're a quarterback in the nfl people are calling you an elite quarterback already and it's like dude not all 32 teams can have an elite quarterback there can't be 10 elite quarterbacks in the league if there's only one or two or three of them winning super bowls you know what i'm saying like if tom brady's running it for 10 years and he's winning six out of ten you know he's in my you know unless somebody else is winning four or, you know maybe two other guys are winning two of them it's like there, there's only room for one or two more elite quarterbacks. You can't, like, it's what I'm saying with fighting. It's like not every single fight is a super fight, you know, just because two champions are fighting and all that. So I am quick to be on that. And it's like the whole GOAT conversation now. It's like everything's got to be the greatest. Everything's got to be the greatest fight you've ever seen. Everything's got to be the greatest this, greatest that. But when we actually get something like this, where Islam Makachev and Alexander Volkanovsky, just off of just the resumes alone, I think what Islam's twenty three and one with one knockout loss to was a Worley Alves back in the day, and then and then or it wasn't even Worley Alves. It was uh oh, I'm blank as shit. I think it was Adrian or Adriano Mart Martins or something like that. He kind of looks like him, but anyway, still, it's like he lost his first fight, and you know it's been on a tear since. I mean, at least in the UFC, he lost his first fight in like what twenty sixteen, I think. So you got. You got his only loss, and then he's dom dominating people. And then you got Alexander Volkanovsky, literally only lost one fight. I think his, I think it was like his first or second pro fight, and he's twenty five and one since. And that's beating. And this is where we get in this conversation because I feel like I'm one of the only people lining up here full Alexander Volkanovsky right now. I am all in on Alexander Volkanovsky. I think he's going to shock the world Saturday. I really think he's going to beat Islam. And I don't. And it's not necessarily because I think he's like better or anything i just i'm telling you man i just think i mean i can't speak from i can't speak for these guys but just off of what i watch and everything man i'm telling you the level of competition i know that it's 10 pounds less and i know the, the uh, grappling isn't as good as islam but like alexander has ran through way more impressive people to beat max holloway three times and i mean there's argument that he lost two of them there's argument he won all three there's argument you know there's arguments he lost one you know you could go anywhere on those first two fights but that third fight man and i've said it before i just said it last week or so i'm talking about it like talking about a max holloway his return it's like man that was one of the most depressing nights of my life watching alexander volkanovsky beat the shit out of max holloway like max holloway is a top three fighter of mine for sure i've been the biggest fan ever you know the blessed is best i i love it all you know what i'm saying but to watch one of my favorite fighters get dominated like that was a tough one and you guys know how it is i get more nervous for my favorite fighters fighting than i would if i was fighting or if or anything you know what i'm saying so this shit just gets tough, and I'm telling you, you guys cannot be sleeping on Alexander Volkanovsky. And I know, you know, I know that he's given up more significant strikes in just one fight than Islam's done his whole career against Max Holloway. But it's like, dude, that's Max Holloway. He's one of the greatest strikers of all time, and at least, at least when it comes to being able to touch up your opponent, like, yeah, he doesn't have the power that most people do, but that dude's got the 
the cardio for days and has the ability to punch your face in all night all night and it's almost i think it's worse i think i would rather get one lucky punch knocked out than getting my ass beat literally just punched in every five seconds like every three seconds boo, 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 everything's just coming at you because max is that good so like for volkanovsky to sit there and go through all that and fire back and win i mean dude it's so impressive and this is the other thing too that i think people are sleeping on and this is why i love alia tapira so much if you guys watch Aliyah Tapira, or if you watch Alexander Volkanovsky, which I think we haven't gotten to see much, but I think we're going to see it this weekend, is the ability to be able to have your takedown defense ready and as the number one thing, being ready for that, but also not allowing yourself to get hit. This is like the most slept on thing, I think, is most... Other than cardio and heart and everything, I think this is the most like slept on thing you could have in the UFC, especially in MMA, just in high level MMA in general. Is you start seeing these guys, I mean, we there's I can go on for days with uh with with uh, examples of it, but dude, like all the guys that they are, they go into the fight like against Habib or something. Like Connor is a prime example for this. Connor goes into a Habib fight, knows he's a way better striker, so he doesn't he doesn't train striking at all for the entire camp. All he's doing is wrestling. All he's doing is wrestling defense. All this. And then he goes out there, and I know the first two rounds, he did decent at least making sure that Habib didn't get you know too far into advancements and positions and get in the mount and being able to do what he does. So it was impressive with the wrist control and stuff, but we've seen it slowly starting to show up. And then when they finally stood there for a while, Habib you know, knocked Conor McGregor down with that overhand right, which you would never see happen. So it's like, that right there, if you see them strikers, they get so worried about the takedown that they start getting hit by somebody they would never get hit off if it was just a kickboxing sparring, you know, like some sparring and kickboxing or if it's kickboxing match or boxing or just strictly stand up, you know, they would never get touched by this guy ever. And here they are getting touched because they're so worried about the takedown. And that's what's so impressive about guys like Aliyah Tapira or Alexander Volkanovsky. And quite frankly, I think it has to do with them being so, you know, low and such a nice center of gravity that like, they're just so capable of being ready. And I, I don't know what it is, man, but I'm telling you, I think it's going to play a huge role in it. If you can sit there, because that's I think that's a, another thing I'm thinking here. I think Makachev, I think as impressive as he is on, this, on the ground, he does have some sneaky stand-up. He's very talented stand-up. And, I mean, if you hear anybody talk, coaches and all that, it's always it's always about Makachev as being – he was way more impressive striking than Habib and all this shit. So it's like – I'm very excited to see how Volkanovski is going to do. I, I don't know why. And, I mean, it's not I'm nowhere close to being right. It's just, you know, and I might change my mind tomorrow or Thursday or Friday or Saturday morning when I wake up and the fight night's actually there. It's like, oh, you know, I think Islam's actually going to win. But I'm telling you, for the last month or so, dude, I'm just, there's something about Alexander Volkanovsky, dude. I'm telling you, I think he's got a good chance here. And I could, I'll easily bite my words. I'll, e- I'll easily swallow him, whatever. It's like, if... If Islam goes out there, takes down Alexander Volkanovsky in a second, holds him down, chokes him out, does what he did to Bobby Green, Charles Oliveira, does does to everyone, Dan Hooker. If he does all that, then it's like, okay, yeah, dude, it's just impressive. But I don't know why, man. I just don't see Volkanovsky doing that. I think another thing as well, don't get me wrong here. I know Brian Ortega isn't as strong as Islam Makachev. But when we're talking straight jiu-jitsu and straight submissions, that dude's got maybe, I'm probably taking Ortega's technique at least a little over islam and i know i know that sounds crazy because islam you know choking out charles Olivier, all these guys saying all that but really what he does he's so good with his power and his and just his uh being like a blanket on you he's smothering when he's on top of you so it's like you're so worried about all these things and you leave yourself open for a submission and i think that's what his with islam ortega is just so good at setting you up for it and get you into that which i think like it could be talked about, but I know Ortega is not as strong as Islam, so it's going to be a little different. Like, if Islam, you know, racks up a, a triangle or, you know, a rear naked choke or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't know if he'll be able to get out of it like he did against Ortega, as I'm talking about Volkanovski, because just of the strength. But I'm telling you, man, for him to go through that, at least mentally and confidence wise, to go through that with Ortega, who's way better in jiu-jitsu, I mean, god damn, dude, that's saying a lot. I mean, not, not to mention the just the outclassing he did a Max Holloway. I mean, Jesus Lord. The Korean zombie fight was one of the most one-sided, brutal victories ever. And you know, I just I don't I know it's gonna be a close fight. And I know is on or I know uh Volkanovsky's got a big hill to climb, but dude, I'm telling you guys, I just don't want to sleep on Volk. I I'm also sitting here too, if we're really being honest with ourselves, guys, like as as much as I hate to say this. And it is true that it's talent. And this isn't fair to Islam. This isn't an Islam thing that he even should be worried about or anything. 
But when we're talking to, like the judges, when we're talking, when we're talking the UFC war room that Dana White's always talking about on Monday, you know, when we're talking the guys that are in charge of his future when it comes to the matchmaking and things. If Islam loses this fight against Volkanovski, I could easily, you can almost see it now. It's almost why Dana White's forgetting Islam's name. Islam's name. It's like, even if he wins or if he loses, I just don't see it being as hyped up as it would be just because we all know that Islam's in this position because of be retired. And it's fucked up as it is. And even though Islam's a whole different person and honestly a way different fighter, it's just because they're from Dagestan. And it's like he's in the shadow. Oh, excuse me. It's like he's in the shadow of Habib. And it's really not fair to him. So it's like if he loses, I mean, we could easily be sitting here. Oh, it was just a want to be Habib, you know? Like what? A, it's not Habib, you know? Like where's Habib at? Like we, it's all, it's all going to be about Habib, and it's always been. It's literally already about it. It's like why isn't he in your corner? So I think Islam's got a lot to show here. Um, but also, you can't deny his confidence right now. Coming off of Islam Makachev, just absolute, or not Islam, but that's him. But I'm saying the Charles Oliveira uh, beating that he just absolutely put on him. So. You know, this is a very tough one. I think that it's a damn shame that this fight isn't being as hyped up as it fucking it, it should be. And I, if I see another slap fighting promotion, slap league promotion over this, I'm going to be pretty heated. Not that I can personally do it. What am I going to do? Tweet a couple things and nobody's going to see it or post a video about it. And what's that going to do? It's not going to change anything. But still, it's just, it's why I do these videos. Like, I don't do it for me. You know what I'm saying? I do this literally just, I know myself, like what, post a video, get a couple hundred views, you know, maybe luckily get a couple thousand feeling cool. And it's like, still, it's like, I know that's not going to do anything in the grand scheme of things, but it's like, at least I'm trying to give these fighters the love that they deserve because their own damn promotion won't even give it to them. So, you know, these guys are my favorite athletes in the world. I mean, don't be me wrong. I'm, you got you got your guys out there. Like, I mean, I was the biggest Kobe fan back in the day. And I guess the older I get now, I'm pushing 30. So the older I get, I don't necessarily have like a favorite, you know, like a, like a major sport fan like or a athlete, I should say. Like, I don't have one of my favorites anymore. It's not like I can look up. Like, LeBron's still in there. I love LeBron. Like, you got these certain guys. But, like, I'm older than most of these dudes now. You don't really have a respect and love for these guys in the sport like you used to because they're just younger than you. And it's hard to root for people younger than you. But when it comes to fighting, a lot of the guys are closer to my age. They do, like, my literally what I think is the hardest sport in the world. Like, I got so much respect for these guys. And for them to not be able to get paid, like, which I know it's coming. It's going to take time. Like, that's why there was lockouts in the U.S in the NBA back in the 80s, the NFL's had theirs, the NHL's had theirs, the MLB's had theirs, like, you know, there had to have been something to get, a, like, a, a player's union, and they had to do all this to make sure that they get 50% of the revenue or more or whatever, like, it's going to happen in MMA one day, and I don't know how it's going to happen, and I would love to see it, but until then, man, somebody's got to be loving up on these fighters and giving them what they deserve and shouting them out and shit, because that's, dude, they deserve more than a LeBron James to me, they deserve more than a Patty Mahomes getting half a fucking billion dollars, like, yeah, I guess football, you can put your life on the line, and I do love football. I'm not going to sit here and talk shit about it. I played it and everything, but, like, you know, it's concussions are legit. I'm not saying that, and you do put your life on the line. Look at DeMar Hamlin, but I'm just saying for the average, like, you don't have as much to lose as these MMA fighters do. Like, in all fairness, too, unless you're coming up, I know there's there's contradictions here. Like, I know unless you're that rare guy that just got signed off the, you know, the practice squad, and then he tried to make it and gets cut, and, like, what about him? But I'm just saying for the most part, when we're talking, you actually have the spotlight on you, like these UFC fighters we're talking about, MMA fighters who legitimately get to go to the main stage, like the starters would in NFL and stuff. Those guys got, what, 18 games plus playoffs if they have more to, you know, to change your view about them. Like I say all the time, NBA's got 82 games in the year plus playoffs to change your mind about them. Same with MLB, 100 plus games a year, 100, like 80, 160 games a year or something crazy plus playoffs. If you make it, like you have four ch chances in a week to change somebody's opinion compared to UFC where it's like or MMA where you're training six months off the fucking year and you finally, six months later, you could have everything in your life could be going wrong and you have to step into the fight. You got a torn ACL nobody knows about. And guess what? You go out there and you put on a shit performance because you need the money. You need the 10K to show, the 20K to show, and you lose the other 20K because you didn't win because you were injured. And it's like, but if you would have backed out of that, you're not getting paid at all. Then you got to wait another six months. And like all these people forget about you and they think you're soft because they're seeing that you pulled out of a fight. Like, dude, it's, I can go on for days about examples of why I'm so attached to these fighters and why I love them outside of it being my favorite sport. Like these guys deserve it. And it really upsets me that somebody like Islam Makachev and, you know, Alexander Volkanovsky with all the years that they put into work, that they're not getting this love that they should be getting. And I know us fans are doing a great job, but man just telling you guys one of the greatest fights that we've had in so long 
and it's just like it's just another day. It's like I I feel like I've honestly heard more about Derek Lewis and his you know his little run in with uh, COVID, why he couldn't fight last time, and his weight loss. And I've heard about Islam Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky, which is saying something. So as always, this is the fifth round, and I'm sure I'm going to post another video later on in the week, changing my mind about this whole thing. But guys, do not sleep on Alexander Volkanovsky. Let's go.